Hello all, I've been meaning to do this video for a little while now. For those of you who have seen it, I had a video a little earlier where I had attempted to frag this frog spawn and things kind of just went horribly wrong. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a link in the description, you can go check it out. But today, I'd like to show you the right way to do this. Now, when I did the last video, it worked out pretty well, um, and I removed some heads that were being really badly shaded here, but I actually didn't remove enough of them. When it turns out, as it turns out, when I glued it back in, there are still some, some heads that are being badly shadowed. And I'd like to get them out, move them on to somebody else, and allow this whole coral to kind of grow outward a little bit. So that is what I'm going to do today, and this time I'm going to do it properly. But before I do, let me show you the frags from last time. So, even though the method was less than desirable last time, the results actually worked out pretty good. This is one of the frags from before. This just got moved into my little nano here. It's, uh, you know, kind of an LPS and softy nano. It's pretty, uh, pretty basic, but uh, here is that coral, and it's doing really well. It's nicely polyped out, and it's settling in beautifully here, which is fantastic. While I'm in here, I'll give you a little teaser. This is my little Acan garden I have going in the same tank. Um, I've been meaning to do like a system walkthrough on this. It's actually kind of neat. It's um, relatively new. It's an upgrade from my little 10 gallon that I had in here. And um, it's going really well. So look out for that in the future. The other frag is right here. This one's getting beat up by flow a little bit. It's still in my um, frag tank. And it's also doing quite well. You can see that the tissue has grown down since this one's positioned a little differently. It's grown down and covered over the cracked and broken skeleton areas. So this is going to lay down more skeleton and it's going to, um, you know, completely seal that up more than I was able to do with the glue, of course. Um, I have had some interest in this coral, but there was one person I promised it to, so I need to make sure they don't want it and um, I'll move it on to somebody else. But they're both doing absolutely fantastic despite my best efforts to, uh, to kill them, unfortunately. So the thing that's hopefully gonna make this video a lot more successful than the last one is we're gonna cut it differently. Instead of using clippers like these, which have the potential to crush the skeleton, um, like I said before, usually you can just use the very tip to crack it and it's fine, but sometimes, as we saw before, it does crush. So this time I'm gonna be removing the coral from the aquarium. We're just gonna make that decision up front, and I'm gonna use this um, to cut it instead. This is more like slicing it through it with a saw blade. This doesn't have any actual teeth, but it's just like a smooth edge that has a diamond dust attached to it, and it slices right through the skeleton just like butter. It's pretty amazing. Um, if I were actually buying a tool today to do this, I would probably get a cheap knockoff battery powered Dremel instead of this actual like name brand one. But I've had this for, geez, 20 years and uh, it works great. So it's what I continue to use. I'm a little nervous about these big vents looking right into the motor here and salt water and everything else, which is why I'd probably go battery if I was buying something today. But have it, it works great continue to use it. Also, this makes a ridiculous, ridiculous mess. So make sure you wear safety glasses and I wouldn't do it on the dining room table. Do it something like the garage or whatever, because it will, um, the spinning wheel will just fling bits of skeleton around. So be aware of that. All right, here we go, back in this position once again. So as before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to remove this rock here that the LG Blenny is sitting on. Sorry, guy. Um, probably the clam rock will have to scoot as well, put him over here like I did before. And then the top piece of this frog spawn here, I am going to remove um, this time. Rather than trying to sneak in there and cut a piece out, I'm just going to remove it. And then I'm going to meet you in the back room for the cutting process. I love seeing the top-down view, especially of these clams. They're just stunning from the top. SPS too. That guy over there, then hopefully, whoop, there's a coral there. This guy somehow got a little more challenging to move, but there we are. Let me take care of some of that monopora while I'm at it, actually. Which gives me access down here to the 
Aha. Nice. And as you can see, this is actually a number of heads here. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and just remove basically this branch area here. And, you know, maybe we'll take these two off. That'll give me two nice pieces. And then I'll leave this one on and glue that one back in sticking out further. But with the way this guy was positioned, it was completely shading one of them. And then it was ending up behind all of these and it just wasn't thrilled with it. So we're going to take care of that right now. All right, we are back at the workbench now, and I'm actually trying to be a little bit quick with this because that one um, rock is out of water right now. But what I am going to do is just, this is just like a little plate that I made when I was younger um, in pottery class or something. I've got this guy to close up as much as I can, and what we're gonna do now is just, I am gonna just cut right here, slice this piece off, and then right down the side here and we should end up with some really nice pieces. So let's see how this goes. You can see how that just cuts right through absolutely effortlessly. Let's see if I can show you this. You see the inside of the skeleton there? It's a pretty neat little honeycomb structure. Um, never mind the floors, they're completely waterproof in this room so I can drip all day long. But um, really, really neat. I really, really like how this just cuts through and how it does just such a clean job. Now, we were talking about slicing these into two as well, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Again, this isn't particularly sharp. I mean, you don't want to hit yourself with it, but it's not like a saw blade where it's going to cut you. Um, but it does a great job, more like the diamond bits you use for cutting through glass. And you can see, once again, in this difficult to cut area between them, it just does a really clean job of making a nice straight cut. I'm going to take these little guys here and I'm going to put them in the fry tank. We're going to glue the big guy back in place. We're going to put the tank back together and then we'll worry about mounting these in a second. All right, we are back here at the tank. We have our frag. I try and keep the head down so that the, the tissue doesn't, uh, and supported so that the tissue doesn't cut against the skeleton. We have our super glue. I love this stuff. Um, the containers that dispense it work really, really well. They've got a little pin that keeps the um, dispenser free in the cap and I've just found that to be incredible. I used the BRS ones for a while. The glue is great. The bottles clog up and so I've gone back to this and now my goal is to just get this guy glued back into place where he sticks out a good distance and um, he can grow and thrive and kind of this area is what I'm hoping for. Ooh, that looks great. He would fit in really super well right there and get lots of room to grow and the skeleton even fits in that slot nicely. Alright, I put a ton of glue on there as you can see and I put the glue in the water first because, or, or sorry, last. I put the coral in kind of top down because the glue can sometimes form a skin which will cover over the coral and hit and kill it. So I always place the coral in the tank with the um, living side down to prevent that from happening. So that guy is in place and seems fairly secure. Well, yeah, I mean the glue's well stuck. It's just not dry yet. That's fine. It'll. Uh, It'll get there more than anything. What I really want to do is my rock here back into the tank, man, but I want to clean out some of this monopora. This is just, look at this. It's getting no light at all. And it's just unbelievable how it's growing. I'm going to deal with this real quick. Hold on. All right, if nothing else, this should at least slow its encroachment over all things growing in the tank which is great. These floors are waterproof too, which is also great. And this guy, now I see why this guy was hard to get out of here. The coral's growing and kind of bridging over. 
which is nice. This guy can kind of go right back in his spot here. And the clam, boy, while I'm at it, that monopora is getting, man, it's cool looking though. That monopora is getting super close too. Um, I want to be lazy, but I got to do something about this. Hold on. And we're back. The monopora, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna sting and kill a clam, but it will absolutely go around it and make it difficult for the clam to open. Um, it will shade it, grow over top of it so it doesn't get any light and a number of other things. Um, the way this clam is oriented as it opens and closes, it'll actually be able to blow off some of the air um, that's become trapped now that I've taken it out of the water. So that guy should be nice and happy soon, and I can close the doors on this and start mounting the frags. All right, back to business. So I have here my two frags, and if we look at this one, we can actually see that it is busy splitting off into two different frags. So what I actually want to do with this coral is I want to help it out because I'm greedy and I want two frags instead of one. So what I am going to do, you can see that the heads have fully split apart, even though there is tissue here. But we learned the last time that, you know, that's kind of okay. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to cut right down the center of this and help them split apart after I kind of cut off the dead base here. I haven't done this before, but I have seen other people do it and they've had a lot of success with it. So I am going to give it a shot. And then we'll have two frags with this one. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim up the bottom so it's nice and flat, and we're gonna put this guy right on one of these. Because he has such a small, or such a long stock at the moment, I don't see any need to glue him to a piece of rock. So he's the easy guy. Let's get him out of the way first. So the nice thing I said before about these Dremel tools is that you can just create a nice, perfectly flat base. for him to sit on. So you can see that's nice and even. I should be able to get him to sit up almost without glue. And it just makes the gluing process a lot easier. Oops, left my glue in the other room. Be right back. All right, so I'm just gonna put a generous amount of glue down here. And I am going to set this guy on here. And he is already wet, so it should help it cure pretty quickly. And even though that's a really big frag, I mean, it's standing on its own, which is just fabulous. I'm going to give it a second to sit while I do this, and then I'll probably put that in before I glue this guy. So this guy, like I said, we are going to trim off this bottom section very carefully, especially since my glasses are foggy. And now I am going to cut right through this Y. And that completely, absolutely sprayed me in the face in glasses. Cut through the back of it here. I can kind of see where it was. And there we go. We have two nice looking pieces. These ones I want to glue to rocks. I need to wash my face. And I will be right back. So I talk about safety glasses, and this is absolutely why. That is all of the gunk that that blade was cutting, just right across the front of the safety glasses. This will happen pretty much every time. You can see that it's gotten the front of my, you know, deal here. It's obviously gotten the work mat, even some up on the wall. Obviously going to need to wipe that down now. Um, but wanted to show you before I clean these off exactly why this isn't a this isn't a precaution in case this is something that will happen. All right, so that was completely ridiculous. You are going to want to plan on having a shower after you get done with something like this. I have a couple of pieces of rock here that I have chosen, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount these frags to the rock. 
And I think I'm going to kind of go with the way they want to be sitting just a little bit. I think I'm going to kind of glue them like this to get them to kind of come up and out. And I think that's going to look really good. So I've got some glue here and kind of go with the flat side. There we go. And then that can be mounted in the rock so it's sticking out. I like that. And then I'm just going to glue it to this to give it a better plate for sitting on the bottom of the tank. Um, make sure it doesn't, you know, move around too much. The bottom of my frag tank is really the best place for things like frog spawns and torches and things like that. The top is a little, little light heavy for SPS, so it's not ideal. So the bottom is where they go. And once again, I think I'm gonna glue this guy first out of the rock so that he doesn't roll because he keeps trying to roll. And just kind of the same thing here. I'm gonna just glue this guy onto here. And someone will be able to mount that in their rock escape nicely. Um, kind of coming out like that, and it gives it good support. So that is them being mounted, and I'm going to put them in the frag tank now. If you haven't done so already, make sure you like or subscribe to this video. Um, this is the coral about an hour or so later. I've had a shower, I've had a snack, and now the coral you can see is opening back up again. Um, I really hope that it will branch off and grow out this way and this gets it nicely positioned in the light. A little bit shadowed, but not nearly like it was. Um, I'll show you the frags right now. And then these guys here are the frags. My frag tank runs a little bit bluer at this time of day than the other tank, but uh, you can see that they're open and happy and it's almost like nothing happened to them, which is just fantastic. So. These guys, I'll let them heal up for a month or so and then probably put them up on Facebook. But that ha that's a wrap. That is the proper way to frag frog spawn. Not the way I did it last time, this way.